One month ago, I told you to buy the MacBook Air. I said it was the best all-around MacBook laptop, and for that matter, possibly the best laptop anywhere for your money. But after more than one month of using this device, do I still recommend it? Or are there better options out there? And what are some things you should watch out for when configuring your model? The overall feel of the MacBook Air really strikes at the heart of classic Apple design. Sure, this design is unchanged from previous iterations of the Retina MacBook Air, but the lightweight 2.8 pound aluminum body complete with those sloped edges just give off such an iconic look that harkens back to the MacBook Airs of the past. In fact, the design is more of a comment on why Apple designs seem timeless and really stand out over its competitors. Even though this might not be the bezel-less MacBook design of the future that you necessarily wanted, it's still a nice looking laptop and the build quality overall feels very solid with its all metal body. The slope design also has its benefits because the keyboard is a tiny bit more elevated than the metal surface below where your palms rest and creates a more comfortable typing experience than what you would get on the flatter and thicker design of the 13 inch MacBook Pro. And the big trackpad is second to none with a smooth scrolling experience. It's clickable anywhere thanks to the haptic trackpad system because it doesn't have any movable parts and the big surface area of the trackpad is great for using Mac gestures like getting a shortcut into Launchpad. The keyboard on the Air is also fantastic, which should be expected after Apple's glorious return to the scissor switch keyboard mechanism for their Magic Keyboard design. It's hard to believe that only a year ago, well, I guess two years ago, hello 2021, that Apple had a butterfly keyboard where users would report things like repeating or stuck keys and just having to do a lot of keyboard replacements. And with this new Magic Keyboard or old Magic Keyboard, however you wanna put it, I really don't hear any complaints about the keyboard. So that is a great thing that you no longer have to worry about. One of the reasons why you don't hear complaints either is because of the dedicated row of physical function keys, which is still on the MacBook Air, but not on the MacBook Pro, which goes with the touch bar. I feel like the writing is on the wall for the touch bar, and even though it has some legitimately good uses, I don't think enough people take advantage of them or there aren't enough good experiences with the touch bar that make them a practical choice over the quick shortcuts of the function key row. If I was to make a bet, I think the next iterations of the MacBooks would have a function key row just like this MacBook Air rather than the MacBook Air getting a touch bar. So let's put a win for the MacBook Air here. Thankfully though, both Macs have a Touch ID sensor in the top right section of the keyboard, which is useful for logging into the computer, using Apple Pay, and just bypassing password screens in the system administrator or auto-filling passwords in Safari with an extra layer of security. One of my favorite upgrades though is the display, which still has the same Retina resolution as the old Retina MacBook Air, but this time Apple put in a P3 wide color screen, which lets you view up to 25% more colors than a regular sRGB display. While this might not be a huge deal for most people, for me it's one less difference between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, and it's going to be useful for people in the creative fields of video and photo editing so they can get a more color accurate display and don't necessarily have to spend more money to upgrade to the MacBook Pro. And besides the lower max brightness level on the Air, the Air and Pro displays look identical. Speakers are a little bit worse on the Air, but still good for laptop speakers, and the webcam is just okay. It's an improvement over the last model, uh, but it's still a laptop webcam, and that means it's not good, and the phone in your pocket probably has a better front-facing camera than your laptop, and I just feel like that's something that should probably change. But forget all those other things, because it's really all about the M1. The M1 is what makes this MacBook Air a great laptop, and that's still true one month later. For clarification, for previous reviews of the Intel MacBook Air, I would always run tests on them. 
things like benchmarks or even editing a 4K video on it. But I didn't want to ever use the MacBook Air for those things after the review. It was too slow and sluggish for editing a 4K video file or doing a lot of the more intensive tasks that I would do on a computer rather than the more basic tasks like web browsing, watching video, typing up in word processing documents, all those basic tasks that handled fine, but for the more intensive tasks, I never wanted to use the Air out of the initial testing phase. Now, while the Air is still targeted at the main everyday person who needs a solid laptop where they can use it for entertainment, work, office use, and so on, the Air has also become a better laptop choice if you want to push this thing to its limits and start getting into side projects or more creative pursuits like video editing, photo editing, development, music production, and so on. And for me, as someone who edits video on YouTube, instead of ignoring the MacBook Air and avoiding it after my initial reviews, it's now a laptop that I actively pursue and use to run this channel, and it can handle my video editing app of choice, Final Cut Pro, and edits 4K H.265 files smoother than even my previous 16-inch Intel MacBook Pro. That's pretty amazing. And while this is the slowest M1 Mac in terms of video editing because it lacks an active cooling system, it's far from a slouch and exported my 10 minute 4K test project faster than my 16 inch MacBook Pro and easily exported that file faster than the previous iteration of the 2020 13 inch Intel MacBook Pro. The Air is kind of like the iPad now, and I mean that in the best way possible. It delivers tremendous value, and while $1,000 is still expensive for a laptop, it's much less expensive than the thousands of dollars you had to spend on the Mac platform in the past. And in previous years, if you had a budget of around $1,300 and asked me, should you buy a 13-inch MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air for more demanding tasks like video editing, I would clearly tell you to get the MacBook Pro. However, this time, it's different. Now I would tell you that your money is better spent on a MacBook Air with the 16 gigabytes of memory upgrade, and you should only consider the Pro if you're willing to get the fastest M1 MacBook possible and spend up to $1,500 to make sure you get that 16 gigabyte memory upgrade. So basically, if you're choosing between the $1,300 base MacBook Pro or a more expensive MacBook Air with 16 gigabytes of memory, I would actually recommend the MacBook Air. If you're a casual user, I actually think eight gigabytes of memory for this M1 platform is fine, and the base model still represents a tremendous buy in doing basic tasks and even editing in a 4K video timeline, as long as it's a short timeline, no longer than 10 minutes, I would say, I experience no problems or hiccups, and that's probably more intensive than what most casual users will use this laptop for. Most people are going to use this laptop for web browsing, video watching, video conferencing, email, music, light photo editing, and so on. And if this sounds like you, the MacBook Air is the best Mac available for those needs right now because it doesn't make a sound, it doesn't get hot, it's fast, it's speedy, and best of all, it has tremendous battery life that will easily last you through a day and sometimes the entire week without you needing to charge it once. Even software-wise, I haven't experienced any issues with this Air after one month of use. Seriously, most of the programs I have are optimized for the M1 chip, like Final Cut, Affinity Photo, Pixelmator Pro, and even programs I don't use, like Microsoft Office and Google Chrome, they have been updated to support the M1 chip natively. However, I guess it's not all rosy because even though I don't use these apps, I'm going to mention them because there's a large amount of people who use Adobe's suite of apps, like Photoshop, Premiere, Audition, and others, and as of the making of this video, a lot of those apps still aren't natively supported on the M1 chip, and while they do run, they don't take full advantage of the power and efficiency found on this new M1 processor, and while that's not great right now, there is a bright spot as these apps currently all have beta versions available, and it looks like Adobe is hard at work on getting all of these apps optimized quicker 
than I even thought they would. I actually thought Adobe would take much longer to even get a beta out for these programs running on the M1 chip. So it looks like progress there is actually pretty encouraging. So as you can probably tell, after using the MacBook Air for over a month now, my opinion of it has only gotten more positive. It's hard to find something truly negative to say about this device. And while sure, there are still problems with it, like I would like to see an upgraded design, a better webcam for sure. And honestly, it would be great if we can get more than just two Thunderbolt ports. These seem like such minor problems in comparison to the raw performance, silent operation, and downright amazing battery life this device delivers. And I really think when we look back at this point in 10 years, it's going to be one of the bigger inflection points of the entire computer industry when Apple completely changed the computer processor game and what we expect out of our computers. As for right now though, if you need a new Mac laptop, this is the one to get for most people, and it's the easiest one to recommend. So yes, the MacBook Air is definitely worth it one month later, and it's honestly going to be hard for any laptop in the future to beat it. All right, everyone, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please leave me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, well, make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna help the channel out in any way, like maybe purchasing this MacBook Air through one of my affiliate links, check out the links in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a great 2021 and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.